going to start. The, the, the title of tonight is How to Make Healthier Red Blood Cells and White Blood Cells. And in, in light of the coronavirus and its uh, sweeping uh, uh, capture of everybody's conversation, uh, I think it's best to learn about some of the things like your white blood cells. What makes white blood cells healthier and what makes red blood cells healthier. So a few weeks ago, I showed you a couple of uh, embarrassing moments for me, and that is when I was teaching about the red blood cell, or uh, excuse me, about cholesterol and about heart disease, I really uh, wanted a... Um, I wanted to find another op option for measuring something that could matter when it comes to heart disease. And unfortunately, when you look at a uh, total cholesterol or a lipid panel, although there are some hints about health inside a cholesterol panel, it is not just a simple look at the top number total cholesterol, look at your LDL or bad cholesterol, and know if you're going to have a heart attack. That's not true. That isn't how it works. You have to have a complex level of thinking that goes on to improve um, uh, your analysis, if you would, on what happens in uh, the risk of a heart attack. So I went off, I mean, this was probably four or five months because there's a chapter in the book about this too, where I'd said, yes, if you want to look backwards in your health, um, getting a coronary artery calcium score is a great snapshot in time to say how much calcium is inside your your coronary arteries. And when you know, when you have, um, if you live in a metropolitan area, most cardiologists will do them for about $50 and you do not need to see the doctor ahead of time. So it's a great low radiation uh, capture of looking at how much calcium is in the coronary arteries of the patient. And from that coronary artery calcium score, we can make a pretty good prediction about the risk of a heart attack at that moment and over the next few years. If you're lucky enough to have a coronary artery calcium score of zero, the chances you're gonna die of a heart attack in the next 10 years is the lowest of all of the uh, quartiles or patient populations. So having a CAC of zero gives you time to fix whatever might have gone wrong with your health. If you're like my dad who had coronary artery calcium score that I did not need to check because on his chest x-ray, I could see the calcium in the arteries going to his heart. <laughs> That's really bad. I don't want to know what his coronary artery calcium score is, but I do not need to waste his money on looking because the first thing that the, the uh, cardiology team would probably do is try to put a stent in him or try to, you know, see if he's having a near heart attack. And I'm like, no, 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 don't touch him. We are working on other ways to prevent his heart attack. Uh, he's already, I mean, he's already calcified his coronary ar arteries. He, I don't think with his lack of kidneys that he has a life expectancy that would be long enough to reverse the calcium. It doesn't mean that other people don't, but in his case, I probably can't undo that calcium in his heart, uh, in the arteries to his heart, but I can do a few other things. All right, so in my search to say what else is out there, I shared an embarrassing moment where I had found this awesome test where you take red blood cells, um, and as you can see in this picture, red blood cells are made of uh, lipids or, or fat lining the cell membrane, like every Every cell has, see that the little balls on the outside are water soluble, the little strings are actually strings of fat, and that, that bilipid layer, which means there's, there's a, a string of, there's, there's water soluble balls on the outside, water soluble balls on the inside, and then the fat goes towards one another, and the distribution of different kinds of fat uh, really do speak to how flexible are those red blood cells. So you're going to see in this picture, there's uh, some words we're going to learn about in a minute. I, I want you to notice that the red ones are called trans fats, and the trans fats are the ones that are the most dangerous. So we're going to go into them a little bit more. Um, I'm going to skip that slide because we're going to come to a better picture of it in just a second. Uh, when looking at the different types of fats, here you can see that monounsaturated fats are... Um, are one type of fat. Saturated fats are another type of fat. Um, trans fats are the ones that are the most deadly for the for 
humans. What um, the saturated fats can be further divided into these omega-3 and omega-6 fats. Now, I have not talked much about these on my channel. I like keeping it simple, but there are a few things you do need to know about some fats once you've become uh, a little more seasoned in the ketogenic world. So let me just put some caveats out there. If you were my patient and if you were in, in my keto group, I would have nothing to say in this level of education in the first six weeks. I would tell you, eat butter, eat steak, eat anything except seed oils. Like if I could get you to not eat the seed oils, I would. that would be the only thing I would tell you about fats. Uh, I don't want them looking at the types of fats. I want them getting very used to eating fat and feeling full. But as you do journey into your older years and want to see, well, what's my risk of all this fat? Can I monitor some things that do improve my health? One of them being, how did my dad fight off that ridiculously lethal level of pseudomonas in his body? And I contend it's because he has flexible white blood cells. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. Okay, so these are the five different kinds of fats. We're going to break them down a little bit further. Uh, I do love this slide that says you can find out what fats make up your cells uh, with omega-3 index. Uh, the, this, this test is something that I put out the, uh, about five or six weeks ago when I did all this research to find that there is a test you can do where you measure the kinds of fats that are found in the skin of your red blood cells that um, we know that eating a lot of saturated fat does not directly increase the level of saturated fat in your blood, uh, but eating a lot of carbohydrates can change the way your fats turn up in your body. So testing matters because it's not just about what fats you eat, it's also about what level of insulin you've been living with. So here's that uh, picture again. Uh, I actually was going to start there, so <laughs> sorry about that. This was supposed to be my starting one. Uh, I like to think of the polyunsaturated fats as, um, and we're going to talk about those in just a second, as an antifreeze. Um, they really keep that, um, they keep the, um, the, the membrane of your cells very fluid. Um, and we're going to talk about how to get polyunsaturated fats. We're going to compare them to monosaturated fats, which really are, um, they're the ones that are liquid at room temperature, but they would turn solid if you put them in the refrigerator. Um, so like olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil might be some examples of monounsaturated fats. Uh, don't get, don't, don't let your eyes glaze over. Here's a, a little better way to talk about this. So when I'm teaching students or when I'm teaching patients about fats, the two things I like them to know are there are some fats that your body will make. And most, and the monounsaturated, the MUFAs, if you would, are the ones that your body uh, can make them from other fats. They are not essential, meaning if you do not eat Ma MUFA, and I'll put those, that slides in there. Monounsaturated fats, which is, um, they are not essential. Your body will make them. It is the essential fats that we're going to focus on tonight, and they have everything to do with the best way to fight off your coronavirus worries, uh, the way my dad fought off Pseudomonas at 76 without kidneys, um, is your polyunsaturated fats, which are essential. And these essential fats um, are also the antifreeze to these white, the, 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 the lining of your cells. So when we look at how to uh, separate these two, the non-essential ones are the monounsaturated fats, your body will make them. If you don't eat them, you'll be fine. But essential means they are essential for life. If you don't eat them, you are going to die. When I take care of vegans or people that have really had uh, a long journey of um, no animal products, uh, the, the places where their brain isn't working well and their immune system's falling apart, their energy level is low, is because these essential fats were not, they didn't eat enough of them to stay above a certain threshold of health. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.